Hello, Devoted Geeks. This is Dallas here uh, for a very special, somber bonus episode for you guys, if you will. This morning, uh, like many of you, my social media blew up at the news that Jason David Frank, the actor who played Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger, the White Ranger, the Red Ranger, <laughs> um, passed away. And I know for a lot of you guys who are listening to this podcast, for a lot of people out there in the community of geeks, you're hurting. It's been a, a rough couple of weeks for us as geeks, passing of Kevin Conroy and now this. And this one hits a little bit harder than some because of the way that at the moment is being reported. Now, legitimately, we don't have an official notice yet as to what happened. And the official news outlets that are reporting, they are saying, hey, look, we need to be um, considerate and caring for the family. And we do. Jason David Frank had a family. He had a daughter. He has family members who are legitimately hurting right now. And we need to respect that. We need to respect the space that they need. But from what's been told is that Jason David Frank took his own life at some point last night. Now, whether or not this is true, it has a lot of people questioning and wondering and hurting. And it brings to life some very real questions. It brings to life some very real conversations about mental health. I did not know Jason personally. I do have a, a picture autographed by him because a, a dear friend of mine uh, obtained that for me. Uh, I did see Jason in a panel once at a con years ago. And everything you saw on the outside looked like the dude had it together. He was a good guy. Was he perfect? No. No, he wasn't perfect. There's a lot of things out there that Jason dealt with. There's a lot of um, reports about some of the stuff he's, he's struggled with over the years. And I know from interviews that for years he's never gotten over the uh, the death of his brother. He was a man that gave so much to his fans and he worked hard at, at what he did. But he, while on the outside, looked like he had it together. On the inside, there was something missing. There was something that he was dealing with, that he was struggling with. And again, if these reports are true, these things got the better of him. And he took his own life. This podcast episode is not to make light of the situation. I'm not here to explain the situation. But I do want to bring some encouragement through the situation. Mental health is a real thing. And it's one of those things that is not taken care of enough. There are people all over the world who are dealing with various forms of depression. Genuine depression. And it's hard for them. It's tearing them apart. Now, I come from a background that when I look at depression, I see things on multiple levels. There is the genuine mental health issue, the biological issues, and then there is the spiritual side of things also. And these two things are married together. They're not separated as some try to make it out to be. They're married together. And we have to address that in a person when they're dealing with depression and anxiety and fear. Because if we don't, if they're not handled appropriately, there is a turning that can take place that could lead to somebody passing away in a very tragic manner. One of the things that keeps people in this dark space is they feel like they can't that they are they feel like they need to that they that they should just hold their own they should just be strong and just do it on their own i want to encourage you guys if you're listening and you've been dealing with depression anxiety and maybe you're dealing with some thoughts of of suicide do not do this alone do not try to be the strong man that tries to hold this on his out on his own there's a a, spa, a passage ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 11 through 13 it says this Again, if two lie together and they keep, they keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? 
And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Better was a poor and wise youth than an old and foolish king who no longer knew how to take advice. What this passage here is talking about is the need, the necessity for people to need other individuals, to, to, to take the advice of other individuals, to reach out to them and, and have them in their lives, to hold them up for when they're struggling, when they're dealing with things. You do not have to handle things alone. And you should not. If you're dealing with these things, you need to find people in your life who you can go to, that you can voice your struggles with in an appropriate manner. People who are mature enough to help you walk through these things, both from a spiritual uh, side of things and then a very real, very practical side of things. Now, there are some people that when they deal with these, with these thoughts, this anxiety, these fears, they feel like that if they confess these things, it's not that they're trying to be strong, but they feel like if they confess it, that, that somehow they're weak, somehow they're not strong enough. But nobody ever expects people to handle things on their own. Nobody who is worth listening to, at least. In the book of Philippians, Paul's writing to a church, and he says something very interesting in chapter 4. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. In this, he's saying, look, I go, I have gone through all these things. I have suffered through all these things. I've been brought low. I have been through terrible situations. He's recognizing the fact that he's not been in the best places at times, but he's learned the secret about going through these things is that in verse 13, I can do these things through him who strengthens me. He understands that in Christ, he can maneuver, he can function, he can operate no matter what situation he's going in, but it's him In Christ, we have to have a relationship with God. And confessing that we're struggling with things doesn't mean that we're less than. You're on the same level as Paul, the guy who started the entire, (laughs) who is, he didn't start, but he was, he's a essential figure in the church. Letting people know that you struggle is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength, of understanding your boundaries and needing help. Again, this isn't easy. I understand that. I have had the opportunity to talk with many people who have dealt with some very, very dark thoughts, some very dark things that happen in their lives. And I've tried my best to be an ear and listen to them. I understand this is that these intrusive thoughts, they're not easy to fight off, but you can do it. On the practical side, I need you to understand there are people in your life who are there for you. Lean into them. At the same time, there's a very spiritual side of things. We have to trust in God. We have to lean into him. And a lot of people, they have this mindset because they're separating the spiritual and the physical things apart. That God, may, maybe you, you come from the mindset that God isn't there for you. But he is. He's been there the entire time. He's positioning you in place to hear things and hear people who can encourage you and help you if you would reach out to the right people in an appropriate manner. Some of you who are listening to this podcast right now, you're questioning this very thing. You're like, man, how do I, God doesn't care about me. He put this podcast in your feed, didn't he? You're listening to me tell you you're loved, you're cared for. There's a plan and purpose for your life. You should not give up. There's so much more. There's a psalm that I look to when I'm at my lowest, when I'm struggling the most. And I've been through some times where I have been very, very low. And I've questioned where things were at. And I've done my best trying to handle the physical side of things, but I'm now in prayer seeking the very real, very spiritual healing that I need. And this psalm keeps coming to me. I never forget the first time I came to it. I was, I was in a very dark place. And I found this psalm, and joy and peace begin to restored, be restored inside of me. I want to read this psalm to you guys. 
It is uh, Psalm 121. And I'm sp- specifically, I'm reading from a particular translation called the Complete Jewish Bible. And it reads like this. If I raise my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from Adonai, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. Your guardian is not asleep. No, the guardian of Israel never slumbers or sleeps. Adonai is your guardian at your right hand. Adonai provides you with shade. The sun can't strike you during the day or even the moon at night. Adonai will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. Adonai will guard your coming and going from now and forever. In this psalm, the psalmist is pointing out the fact that God, the Lord, He's our guardian. He's the one who's there for us. He's the one that's walking us through things. He does not sleep. He's always there listening. And I want to encourage you, if you're struggling, lean into him. Again, don't separate these two things. Don't separate the very real physical things that are there. Get help. Get professional counseling. And I mean like a legitimate licensed professional counselor, guys. It's okay to take medication. It's okay to do these things, but don't neglect this very real spiritual side. Lean into the Lord. Lean into him through prayer and reading the scriptures. And I want to put this out there. A very, very real, very spiritual thing is being in community. Don't isolate yourself. Get into a community of people of, of that will encourage you and pray with you and help you walk through this in an appropriate way manner again i don't know the situations that led to potentially jason david frank taking his life i hope that these rumors are false but the more that comes out it doesn't sound like it is he was a person that genuinely inspired me as a kid and as a young man so yeah i'm grieving i know so many other people are out there doing the same and there's a lot that we can learn from jason a lot from the good things he did and maybe some of the things he didn't do. I love you guys. I care about you guys deeply. Over the years here at Geek Devotions, we've talked about suicide and depression, several things. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that's on our website. So what I'm going to do is in the show notes of this episode, I'm going to have links to some of the articles and podcasts that we've had that kind of walk you through some stuff. They're giving some resources. I know that there's a lot of groups out there that do stuff. Uh, We have our friends over at Victims and Villains who do some amazing things. But I do want to point this out to you guys. If you're dealing with thoughts of suicide and you're struggling, call 988. Just call them. It's a line that's specifically designed to help people. It is called the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. And they want to help you. They want to walk you through uh, what's happening and help you to get past it. They also have other resources on there for like people who, man, you're, you've lost somebody to suicide and you're trying to recover. Check it out. I also invite you, if you're a believer, even if you're not a believer, um, get connected to a local body of Christians, healthy, Bible-based, believing Christians, and get plugged into a community. Speak to a pastor. Let them help you walk through this. Again, this was this isn't a big, exciting episode. This is obviously, it's it's one of those things that we feel like we need to put out there um, because I know there's a lot of people hurting, questioning things, and there's a lot of doubts, a lot of fears, and and for some people, hearing the news has stirred up a lot of stuff inside of you. You don't have to fall victim to these intrusive thoughts. You don't have to fall victim to depression and anxiety. You can move forward. I love you guys. Stay devoted. Peace and love.